April 28th, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Phew, that was hairy. Tell me about it. We barely made it through by the skin of my teeth. I can't say I'm crazy about that prosecutor, Sadmati, either. You know, with the way he says, let it go and move on as if it's nothing. Let it go and move on, huh? Oh boy, am I interrupting a secret conclave of villains or something? Got your next evil scheme in the works already? What do you want? <laughs> Keep making that face champ and everybody's gonna change the channel. Look this way, Trucy. Now smile for the camera. Let's see those pearly whites. Isn't that what the Grammaire Creed tells you to do? How does it feel, Trucy? Everybody online can't stop talking about it. They're calling you a real witch out there. Could this be the end of Troop Grammaire? Go away, you creep! Oh, what's this? Something just charged in the frame. It looks like a yellow gorilla or something. Could it be Trucy's pet? Filming is prohibited inside the courthouse. Do you want me to get the bailiff? Huh? Filming? What are you talking about? I don't even have a camera on me. Huh? What happened to the camera? It just disappeared right before our very eyes. <laughs> I'll be enjoying the rest of the Trucy show from the gallery. I put out a call for Trucy's fans to come and support her earlier, by the way. Bet I'll get some great footage out of them. This is gonna be good. Hang loose, baby. He called in some of Trucy's fans? But for what purpose? Apollo? That thing Mr. Reddens just did. That was some high-level slate of hand. Huh? Why would he know how to do something like that? I don't know, but he definitely has some serious magic skills. No way. But I thought he said magicians were all a bunch of good-for-nothings. Mr. Lawyer? Oh, hello, Bonnie. Can I help you with something? Uh, well, there's something that's been bothering me. Really? What is it? Well, you see... Hey, dummy! What are you whispering to Lobster Boy about? But Betty, who the heck do you think you are? Are you crazy? You want a piece of this? You know you have to talk to me first before you do or say anything, you hairbrain. But I, I... Shut your mouth, you dumb bunny. Come with me, now. I wonder what was bothering her. There's no way we're finding that out with Betty constantly hovering over her like that. Court is about to reconvene. Will you be all right testifying? Yes, it's just... I wonder what Mr. Renz has up his sleeves. I doubt he's bringing in actual fans. Yeah, probably not. I wonder what he has up his sleeve, too. He better not be trying to get under Trucy's skin right now of all times. You're Trucy, right? And you'll be fine. Oh, there goes Apollo with his best trick. That's right. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always tell myself I'm fine. All right, I'll give it a try. I'm Trucy, right? And I'm fine. Thanks, Polly. I think I can do this now. That a girl. Good luck up there on the stand. You'll do great. Thanks. I'll be fine. I can do this. All right, Justice. You can do this too. Time to focus on the rest of the trial. April 28th, District Court, courtroom number six. Court is now back in session. Defendant, please step up to the witness stand. Trucy Wright, magician. Here comes the liar, the deceitful witch. Throw the murderer in jail. The last member of that criminal troop. Boo, you don't want to see him on any stage. Order! The gallery will be quiet or I'll have you all thrown out on the spot! What's with all the hecklers? I bet they're the fans Mr. Retton's invited. What a grade-A jerk. Well, he's not gonna psych us out. Now then, Miss Wright. This court would like to know if you switched from the steel sword or other one on stage. So please testify about this issue. She's just gonna try and trick us again with her magic! Hurry up and convict her already! Give her the death penalty! Yeah. <laughs> Silence! All of you! 
I won't tell you again. This right? You feel able to testify? Yes, I'm fine, Your Honor. Trucy, I knew I shouldn't have let her go through with this. Um, I'd like to make a small request. How about instead of testifying with words, I show you exactly what happened. Would that be alright, Your Honor? You can witness my stupendous sword-switching magic and judge for yourselves. In spite of everything, she's still smiling. Our Trucy is amazing, isn't she? She sure is. She's doing just fine up there. A true entertainer always keeps a smile on their face. She's faithfully following the troop Grammaire Creed even now. She really is something else. It's showtime for Magical Girl Trucy Wright. Watch carefully now, everybody. Witness testimony. The stupendous sword switch. Ladies and gentlemen, please focus your attention on this sword. Allow me to demonstrate just how sharp the blade, this blade truly is. See that? No tricks or gimmicks. A very sharp sword indeed. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, watch as I take this sword and... Presto Sordo! There, I've switched it. And now... Huh? As you can see, the blade is not steel, but rubber. That's something very new. B -b 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 Bravo, Miss Wright! Wow, she switched it with a flash! I couldn't see her do it at all. She's completely turned the room around. The hecklers are being drowned out by all the cheering. Where did the steel sword vanish off to, Miss Wright? In order to deepen our understanding of the case, please tell us if you would. I'm not asking out of mere curiosity, just so you know. I usually have the steel sword backstage when I switch them during the show. So when you thrust the rubber sword in the coffin, the steel sword wasn't even on stage but behind the curtain? Exactly. So you see, there is a trick and a gimmick to it after all. And as for where the steel sword went when I performed the trick just now, it's a secret. Wouldn't want to spoil the magic for you now, would I? <laughs> That's our true see. Yeah, still. Miss Wright, that part where you spun around, that's an actual part of the sword switching trick you do for the show, right? Right. The other parts, like the apple, were just to help with my explanation here in court. That's funny. I think I found an inconsistency in her testimony. Hmm. And it looks like I'm not the only one. I don't know what it's doing there. But now that I found it, I have to get to the bottom of it. Now then, Mr. Justice, you may go ahead and question the witness. But try not to ask us dumb questions and spoil this wondrous magic. I thought this was supposed to be my cross-examination. Hopefully this means I can find out why. Ladies and gentlemen, please focus your attention on this sword. Allow me to demonstrate just how sharp this blade truly is. See that? No tricks or gimmicks. A very sharp sword indeed. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, why don't I take this sword and... Presto Sordo! There! I've switched it! Really? Sorry, Trucy, but I got something to prove. Objection! Miss Wright, there's something I'd like to confirm with you. Huh? Well, what is it, Apollo? There seems to be a discrepancy between the way you performed the trick for us just now and the way it appears in the show footage. What? That can't be! I performed it exactly the same way both times. Then what's going on here? Miss Wright, I have the show footage right here, and the part where you twirl your cape around is missing from it. What? But I did it! So... It really is the exact moment you switch the swords? Yes, that's right. Ugh, I knew it!
Well, I certainly never expected the defense to expose the accused lie for me. Mr. Justice, does this mean that you are arguing that the defendant did not swap the swords during the actual magic show? No, Your Honor. That wasn't my intention. I mean, I did swap them. I know I did. I'm absolutely sure. Objection. Human memory is unreliable at best, but in this case, I am afraid that it is the witness herself who cannot be trusted. We can see the footage for ourselves. The claims of this witness are false. But... Now that it has been proven that the accused did not swap swords, it means that the use of the steel sword appears the coffin was wholly intentional. Ugh. And by the way, was it not you, Mr. Justice, who argued that Mr. Reus's death was not an accident, but murder? I assume you have no objections to that still. It was, after all, your own assertion. The defense... Um... The defense has an objection to you, Mr. Apollo Justice. I demand you withdraw the discrepancy you pointed out now. But, but there is a discrepancy, and it must mean something. I'm sure of it. Would the defense team kindly save their spat until after court is adjourned? Now, after all of this debate, it seems we've come back around to the original argument. The defendant knew about the prank plan that would place the victim inside the coffin. What's more, the defendant did not perform the sword switching trick on stage. Through her actions, I'm afraid I have come to see the true intentions of the accused. Her murderous intentions. It's such a shame. But, but I did switch the swords. I swear. You're knee deep in it now, Justice. Way knee deep. Bonnie! Excuse me? Let's see, you are... Which one again? Benny? No, that's not right. Body? It's Bonnie. You are mixing the two names together, Your Honor. Oh, pardon me, and do you have something you wish to say, Bonnie? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to testify. About what? The more I think about it, the less possible it seems. I don't believe Trucy killed Mr. Reyes. Bonnie! Hey, what's the bad idea? Such an incredibly gifted and talented magician would never commit murder. I refuse to believe it. What are you talking about, you hairbrained hair? You keep your trap shut. I got a bag of baby carrots for you, so chew on those and pipe down. No, I won't be quiet. What's the matter with you? Didn't you hear me? Trucy said something to me once, huh? She said, no matter how scared you get, no matter how mean people are to you, you can't give in or give up. That's what being a professional magician's all about. Isn't that right, Trucy? That's right, Bonnie. I've always been afraid to stand up to Betty, afraid to defy her. So I did what she said. But when I saw Trucy today, she gave me strength. Yep, not this again. Um, I'd like to make a small request. How about instead of testifying with words, I show you exactly what happened. Would that be alright, Your Honor? You can witness my stupendous sword switching magic and judge for yourselves. Seeing her courage, and the way she kept smiling despite everything. She's just incredible. So I'm not gonna run away. I'm scared, but for once, I'm going to be brave. <clears throat> what have you done to my sister, Trucy Wright? You've practically brainwashed her! It's the power of Trucy's conviction. That's what it is. It's touched Bonnie's heart. Yeah, Trucy really is one magical girl. Bonnie, is the topic of your testimony related to that thing that was bothering you? That thing you tried to tell us about in the lobby during the recess? Yes. Ever since I saw the show footage, something's been nagging at me. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but something is off. 
I feel like something about it is different from what I saw on the stage. What do you mean by that, Bonnie? I wonder if what was shown on TV is really the same as what happened on stage. Objection. Of course it is. This show has only been performed once, after all. It can't show anything other than what happened on the stage yesterday. Objection! But Bonnie's testimony deserves our attention. We have to examine the show footage. Hmm, but what can we check it against? Do you have some other footage of the show? Well... I have some show footage. You do? One of the TV station's cameramen said he was a fan of mine. He kept his camera on me throughout the entire show. And then afterwards, he gave me the footage he shot as a present. He did? To tell you the truth, I thought it was kind of creepy, so I was going to get rid of it. Hold it! Please submit that footage to the court. Now then, let's take a look at this new footage. You're right. That stuff is kind of creepy. Hmm. Cards. <coughs> Yep, he ran, she ran into the camera, man, and the camera went on the floor. Wow, okay then. He really did keep his camera on Bonnie the whole time, didn't he? I think this cameraman needs to keep his personal feelings out of his work. Well, Defense, do you still believe this new show footage is worth inspecting? Of course I do! Okay, so how are we going to go about this? Let's try comparing the two. We just might find an inconsistency between them. An inconsistency, huh? Yes. The two pieces of footage are of the same scene, so they should match up. But Bonnie felt there was something off about the original footage. So if we can pick out what's different between the two, we'll know what Bonnie found strange. Exactly. Plus, we may figure out why the original didn't show the sword switching trick. Your Honor, the defense would like to compare these two pieces of show footage. Very well. I will allow it. What a waste of time. Apollo, do you know how to compare the two pieces of footage? No, I've never done it before. I'll give you a little lesson then. Use the video player's buttons to go through the footage. When you want to speed through, use the fast forward button. And if you want to go back, use the rewind button. If you want to halt the playback, just use the pause button. Oh, and by the way, if you fast forward or rewind when the playback is paused, you can do a slow frame by frame playback. Okay, and so how do I switch between the two videos? Just use the switch camera button. Now if you'll find a difference between the two pieces of footage, put the cursor over what's different and present it to the court. Thanks, Athena. You really know your stuff. Not really. I just gave it some gusto and then went with my gun on most of it. What? I sure hope she gets right. Anyway, let's give it a try. Just gotta keep it going. Yeah, but I'm using camera too. Just gotta keep it going. Right there. Those cards. Right here. Take that! This is it! Right here! Take a good look at this scene and compare it to the video shot from the front. Oh, the playing cards don't appear in the video shot from the front. Hey, you're right. What's going on here? Miss Wright, what can you tell us about these playing cards? Oh, those? They're the cards I throw when I do the sword switching trick. What? Mr. Justice, does this mean? 
Yes, it means that the sword switching trick was cut from the TV show footage. So the footage was edited? Yes, with malicious intent. That is absurd. Well, we must get to the bottom of this right away. Bailiff, the TV station might still have the unedited footage. Go see what you can find out. Yes, Your Honor. And now we finally encounter him. It's you. Now hold up, Your Honor. This is all just a big misunderstanding, believe you me. Give a guy a chance to defend himself before you start pointing fingers. And who might you be? Right, right. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself there. Here is my business card. Charm to make your acquaintance, Your Honor. Oh, well, how very polite of you. It's lovely to meet you too, Prosecutor Samadhi. Please take my card. A business card? Ah, yes. I read about this custom among businessmen in this country. I have even familiarized myself with the various replies. How do you do, good sir? Or, what's crack a homie, for example? Oh, you're from Take-Two TV, are you, witness? Come to think of it, I believe I've seen you on television before. Yes, Roger Rettens, otherwise known as the Ratings Raja. He is a TV producer and appears on many of his own shows as... He is best known for his catchphrase, Hang Loose, babe. Oh my, so you're the ratings Raja. Hang loose, judgy baby. Nice courtroom you got here. I never thought I'd get to meet you in person. Well, Prosecutor Samadhi, how do you know so much about him? In preparation for the case, I watched all of his shows. I found the ratings Raja goes to Burger Barn of particular interest. It inspired me to visit that restaurant straight away, learn more about the local cuisine. What? You went to Burger Barn? Who would have thought? You must have really wanted to try it, huh, buddy? Because that line, you. Compared to my aesthetic training, an hour's wait is enough. I recommend the Southwestern Burger with Jalapeno Jack Cheese, by the way. I'm having a really hard time picturing him in line for burgers. And <clears throat> Prosecutor Sanmati's unexpected enthusiasm for food aside, Mr. Rattens, what is this misunderstanding you mentioned? Well, for starters, it's true that the footage was edited. You'll get your hands on this anyway, so I might as well show you the unedited footage. It's a pretty long video, so I'll just show you the part with the playing cards. You can see the cards when Trucy spins around, so keep your eyes peeled. Now we get to see the unedited footage. Did you see the part that was cut where Trucy switched the swords? She spins around and the playing cards go flying. Everything like it's supposed to be. Hmm. Then it seems the defendant really did swap swords during the trick. Which means the sword Miss Wright thrust into the coffin was the rubber one. In other words, Miss Wright couldn't have killed Mr. Race. Yeah, see, that's the first misunderstanding right there. What do you mean? Well, Trucy definitely did swap swords, as you saw. So yeah, maybe she didn't kill Mr. Reyes when she stabbed the coffin. But that just means he was killed after he showed up pretending to be a corpse. So you're saying that up until that point everything was going according to the script? If that's true, then when and how exactly do you think he was killed? It was after the dragon set piece came crashing down. I say Trucy murdered Mr. Reyes when she was hidden from view behind the set piece. She could have easily done it behind that huge dragon and nobody be the wiser. Hmm, I see. Indeed, there is a ring of truth to your assertion. You bet. Plus, there's a suspicious looking shadow in the footage too. It's toward the end of the footage just before the dragon hits the stage. It might be easier to just see it for yourselves. Yikes. It's only for a split second, so it's hard to catch, but look here. 
This suspicious shadow must be Trucy. She's using the steel sword she had behind the curtain during the trick to kill the victim. Hmm, now that you mention it, I suppose it does look that Objection. way. Objection! Yeti! This witness is just trying to ram his theory down our throats, Your Honor, and that's not all. Aren't we forgetting? That the witness willfully edited the sword switch out of the footage? You see, there's your second misunderstanding right there. Your Honor, would you mind if I testified about it? I've seen people testify on TV and I've always wanted to give it a shot. That would be fine with me, Prosecutor Satmati. This is quite unexpected. It threatens to disrupt the karmic course of this case. Hey, lighten up, pretty boy. You're gonna like what I've got to say. Promise. Very well. However, if you do anything to impede the last rites for the victim, I will have you removed. All right, with Prosecutor Sadmati's permission, please give us your testimony, Mr. Rettens. Roger Rettens, the raging Raja. Now Kaiser, the courtroom. <laughs> I'm taking over the floor, so listen up, loyal viewers. Witness testimony. It wasn't deliberate, I tell you. Footage is meant to be edited, I tell you. Scenes are spliced together and longer boring scenes are cut out. All the stations edit footage this way. It wasn't like it was done maliciously or something. It was just a coincidence that particular scene was cut. It wasn't intentional. Or what? You got some proof that I had an ulterior motive for editing that footage? I see. So you're saying it was a coincidence that the sword swapping scene was cut? That's right. Glad you got the picture. Objection! Coincidence? That's just a little too convenient if you ask me. Ooh, an objection. How cool. It sure packs a lot more punch when you hear it live. Do that again. I want to get another shot from a different angle. My objection is not for your entertainment. And cut. There. Got some good stuff there. Mr. Rattens, filming is prohibited inside the courthouse. Whoops. My bad, Judge. And if the defense has an issue, we can point it out during its cross-examination. Time to get this scumbag. Footage is meant to be edited, I tell you. Scenes are spliced together and longer, boring scenes are cut out. All the stations edit footage this way. It wasn't like it was done maliciously or something. It was just a coincidence that particular scene was cut. It wasn't intentional. Of all the scenes you could have cut, why the sword switching trick? That seems like too much of a coincidence to me. Oh, so now you're gonna tell me how I'm supposed to edit my programs, Big Shot? It's hard being the boss, kid. You gotta make the tough choices, like which content gets cut. Then let me ask you this. Why exactly did you make such a tough choice in this case? You wouldn't understand, champ. It's all about artistic vision. I tell you, people tell you how to do your job when they don't know the first thing about it. I may not know TV, but I know evidence law. And boy, do I have some for you, champ. I might not be able to show that your selective editing was intentional. However, I know you bear the defendant ill well. And this is the evidence that proves it. The clipboard. Take that! Huh? What's that you got there? This is the contract you had Miss Wright sign just before the magic show. This contract between the first party, Take Two TV, and the second party, Miss Wright, reads If, through the fault of the second party, the show must be cancelled in part or in full, the second party will pay $3 million as compensation to the first party. Three million dollars? That's a completely unreasonable sum! I couldn't agree more. And of course, Miss Wright doesn't have that kind of money. Nevertheless, Roger Rentons had her sign this unreasonable contract anyway. Or more accurately, he conned her into signing it. Conned her? How did he do that? There's a trick to this clipboard that was used by Miss Wright to sign her contract. It houses carbon paper that can secretly copy her signature on her other documents. Oh, come on now. That's quite a nasty accusation you're slinging my way. For starters, you don't have any proof I had anything to do with that carbon paper stuff. Just because Trucy and her agency can't pay up, that doesn't mean I conned her. Hmm, but 
Three million dollars. That's totally out of reach for the average person. In any case, this is important new information. Please add it to your testimony, Mr. Reds. Where's your proof linking me to that tricked out clipboard? You don't have any, do you? No, but I do have something that can be able to make sure you get wrecked. Yup, and it's right here. True C's note. Objection! You must be quite the con man if you can fool a magician with a simple trick. But if you think you can con a lawyer, you're very much mistaken. Hey kid, would it kill you to enunciate in front of the camera? You know, like a newscaster? Up yours. I'd like you to take a look at Miss Wright's signature here on this note. Now let's compare her signature to the one here on this contract. Well, would you look at that? They're exactly the same. That's right, Your Honor. Not just similar, but exactly the same. Nobody can sign their name in exactly the same way twice, unless it's a copy. These signatures are proof positive that you can't miss right. And they definitely prove your malicious intent. Say, not bad, lawyer guy. Didn't know you had it in you. This is really getting interesting now. It'll get great regs for sure. Don't try to dodge the issue, Mr. Rettens. The fact is that you bear ill will against my client, so the show footage was definitely edited with malicious intentions. Isn't that right? What a forced argument defense. All you have really proven is not his ill will towards Miss Wright, but his pensionary greed. That's right. I just wanted money, baby. That stacks of cheddar, that's all. After all, I never even crossed paths with Trucy before this magic show, so I have absolutely no reason to bear her any ill will, right? He didn't bear her any ill will, huh? <laughs> Fat chance, this guy definitely has some major hate for Trucy. You'll see. I'll dig up the dirt and expose the dark heart behind that sweet smile. I'll prove those grammar magicians are all a bunch of lowlifes. I can't prove it with anything, but the things he said all point to that fact. There must be something between the two of them that gave birth to this grudge. Some sort of connection that not even Trucy is aware of. Your Honor, I'd like to argue that Roger Reddens and Trucy Wright must have crossed paths before. There must be some hidden connection between them. Hidden? Connection? What is it now? Just what are you getting at, Mr. Justice? It is futile to even ask, Your Honor. Surely it is just another one of the defense's feckless claims. Objection! You don't seem to have a very high opinion of me. What's your argument? You'll wish you'd taken me a whole lot more seriously. Will I really? Very well, then. Do proceed. Did you figure something out, Apollo? Nope, not a thing. What? That was just some good old-fashioned bluffing courtesy of Mr. Wright's fine training. I hope you know what you're doing. If you're going to make such a bold claim, Mr. Justice, I hope you're ready to elaborate. What is the hidden connection between the defendant and Roger Reddens? Reddens is a magician. That slate of hand trick Mr. Reddens did during the recess earlier. Filming is prohibited inside a courthouse. You want me to get the bailiff? Huh? Filming? What are you talking about? I don't even have a camera on me. What if... Mr. Reddens is the magician too? Why if? I believe it's up to the defense to fill in the blanks, not me. Well, if he is... He may have had some contact with Miss Rice somewhere along the way. Your argument is hardly worth responding to. But by all means, please do continue. As a passage in the sacred scriptures of Koreanism states, he who gives a sermon to a monkey is himself a monkey. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you say to a dimwit, he isn't gonna get it anyway. But we saw Mr. Rattens perform a magic trick. He made his video camera disappear in the blink of an eye. Well, I think it would be pretty funny if I were a magician. You must have been seeing things. Want me to introduce you to a good eye doctor? If a connection as tenuous as that is all it takes. 
then every magician in the country could potentially bear ill will toward the accused. I... I guess you're right. I mean, you're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, are you, short stuff? You would do well to cleanse that putrid mind of yours in the holy waters of Mount Pawnee Pawnee. Three days under a frigid waterfall and even you should rise to the level of a monkey. <laughs> a numbskull for a numbskull. Uh, well, this numbskull has thick skin, so there. I think I get what they're driving at. Even if he is a magician, it's not exactly a reason to bear a grudge against Trucy, is it? Hold on. I can think of one person. One magician who has a reason to bear a grudge against Trucy. Or rather, one magician who has a reason to bear a grudge against True Grammaire. Oh? No way! Is something wrong, Mr. Justice? Your Honor, the defense wishes to submit evidence at this time. I see. And what sort of evidence do you have for us? Evidence that points to the real killer. The one who had a motive to commit this crime. What? <sighs> and what have you come up with this time, Defense? Trucy Wright is the sole heir to True Grammar in its name. This puts her square in the crosshairs, crosshairs of one particular magician. And this piece of evidence points to that one person with a grudge against Miss Wright, the 13-year-old poster. Take that! And who exactly are you naming, Mr. Justice? Thirteen years ago, the great Mr. Reyes belonged to Troop Grimaire. But then the troop ousted him, and Mr. Reyes vows to get revenge on them someday. And what better way to accomplish that than through the ruination of their sole heir? But Mr. Reyes is the victim, Mr. Justice. You've named a dead man as your suspect. But is he really dead? What do you mean, is he really dead? If the fact that Mr. Reus is the victim is what's throwing you off, then how about we consider this possibility? What if the man who died on that stage yesterday was it Mr. Reus? This might be a possibility. What? You mean the victim was an imposter? Not Mr. Reyes! Then what about the real Mr. Reyes? It would mean the real Mr. Reyes is still alive. That's absurd! Mr. Justice, who is the real Mr. Reyes if not the victim of this case? It's all coming together now. I finally see the gimmick, the trick to this entire case. This should explain everything, Your Honor. The real killer. The one who hated Troop Grimaire and wanted to sully its name. The magician lurking in the shadows who set up a fake Mr. Reus in his stead. The real Mr. Reus is none other than Roger Rettens. Take that! But that's... Yes. Yes, it is. Roger Rettens is the real Mr. Reus. What? Him? Objection. Oh, hollow red pepper. Your impotent seeds sprout naught but meaningless empty words. You can't possibly have proof to support such an outlandish theory. Not a bad idea for a soap opera, but not even diehard fans of the genre will stick around past the pilot. You want proof? Well, I've got proof. I can prove it by... Proving that the real Mr. Reyes in yesterday's magic show was a fake. And to do that... I just need you to look at this spot on this poster. 
The scar on his arm. Take that. This is the injury Mr. Ray used to sustain while practicing a magic trick 13 years ago. However, the video the victim shot of himself shows no trace of that injury. Oh my, you're absolutely right. Now, Mr. Rettens, what do you suppose we find if we took a look at your right forearm? Is there by chance a nasty 13-year-old scar on that sleeve of yours? Well, Mr. Rettens, why don't you roll up your sleeve and let the court have a look? Or are you hiding something else up there? <laughs> Come on now, I have nothing up my sleeve. I don't need to hide anything up there, because I require no tricks or gimmicks. For you see, my magic is the real deal. Is this what you were hoping to see? Oh, there it is, the scar. Just as I thought. That's right. I am the Forgotten Magician, abandoned to the dark understage of history. The Great Mr. Race. This is totally absurd! <laughs> How ironic, wouldn't you say? That this odious mark carved into me by Troop Grammaire would bring me back into the limelight once more. Strange are the comic threads before me. If the witness is the real Mr. Reyes, then who is the victim who perished in the magic show? He was but a fan. I met him on one of my programs several years ago. He said he had become a magician out of admiration for the great Mr. Reyes. In confidence, I told him my true identity and let him take on my mantle. And when would this man take over for about two years ago, I taught him my tricks and even acted as, as his producer. And so a mere amateur became a popular magician overnight, courtesy of my magic on the stage we call television. Hope you enjoyed the show. You really had us all fooled. Mr. Rettens, or should I say Mr. Reyes, in your hatred of Troop Romero, you killed the victim Mr. Mystery, and then set up Miss Wright to take the fall, didn't you? You did it all just to tarnish the Grammaire name! <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I set up the prank, that much is true. But it was simply a harmless joke on Trucy, I assure you. Yes, she learned of the plan and made use of it to commit murder. That is how strongly the criminal element runs in the blood of these Grammaire. Objection! But if it was a secret prank that very few people knew about, couldn't you have been the one to use it for murder instead? Yeah. Yikes! Eh. His head! Heh, <laughs> just kidding. What the heck was that? Heed my words, lawyer, for I fear your grasp on reality is slipping. I do believe I told you that my magic is real. It employs neither tricks nor gimmicks. Enough with the ambiguity. Why don't you make your point already? My alibi is as pristine as ever. Wouldn't you agree, Prosecutor Sadmati? Yes, I suppose that is correct. The witness does have a solid alibi. What? <laughs> Recall defense that at the time of the magic show, Mr. Rettens was at Net Take 2 TV. A fact that many people can easily attest to. Yeah, that's right. I forgot all about that. <laughs> so what do you think, Your Honor? Would you like me to testify on the matter? Yes, I think you'd better. Please tell the court more about your alibi. Very well then. On with the show. Are you watching, Magnify Grammaire? The time has finally come for my magic to snuff out your precious predic pedigree. The Grammaire line will be no more. <laughs> 